fintech really resonated across board during the conversations that everyone had. There was a breakaway session on fintech. How much should be expected uh, as a by way of results now going forward? Um, the world is our fintech now, and that's the truth. Uh, in, in terms of results, Nigeria, the, there's capital going into that space. Uh, and when I talk about capital, it's not just about money. It's about the intellectual capital as well, the, 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 the tremendous investment being made. Uh, for, for FMDQ, um, we're in that space. Uh, we're ready to work with the stakeholders to you know, ensure there's access to capital. Uh, and that capital will come in different types, be you know, venture, you know, capital or you know, debt capital, wh whatever um, um, enabling support they require. And that's what FMDQ offers in terms of access to capital. And we're going to work with uh, a couple of them, um, even whilst talking to one of them, um, he's interested in supporting the FMDQ Next program where we're you know, um, introducing the <coughs> kids to, to, to finance uh, and he wants us to partner to do something for FinTech very quickly because again, that is investing in the future. And FinTech, you, you, you can't but look at that very seriously. So, um, we get a sense of the fact that recent times offshore investors have been making exits out of our markets. Yes, yields are looking a little bit more attractive uh, lately. Uh, but does this visit of the Prime Minister for you brings back sort of a re-entry of this offshore investors, because we understand that uh, the United Kingdom is one of the major uh, portfolio investors in Nigeria. Um, if, you, if you look at capital coming to Nigeria, you have to take it in two segments. That's the foreign you know, direct investment, where people establish you know, companies and things like that. Uh, such capital will not move out very quickly. In actual fact, this sort of visit will facilitate you know, the establishment and, you know, <coughs> of such more businesses. Foreign portfolio investors tend to react to so many things. And the fact that they're moving out does not mean it's the end of the world. Because once the issue they're reacting to is solved, they come back. I mean, so there was a time that almost all of them, you know, left Nigeria before we fixed the FX market structure. And they all came back. So, so I think politics has got a bit to do with it. Uh, and it, it's very typical to have, you know, um, uncertainty cost minor adjustments in the market. But the truth is the, the, the sort of um, outflow we've seen in Nigeria is not even, you know, if you look at percentage terms as much as what you've seen in Turkey and other places, yeah. Argentina. Uh, and, you know, Central Bank has also offered OTCFX futures where people are able to hedge the ex exchange. So some of them are more relaxed, you, you know, because that product, that risk management product that the Central Bank introduced has done a lot to calm people, the nerves in the FX market. So, if anyone is reacting to the election February, June, and it buys the futures for June or for July at 363, it's safe. You know, and in terms of liquidity, the crude oil is doing, you know, uh, figures in the 70s. So there's really no panic for anyone to assume the country will not have the liquidity to support it. So really, the only risk you run is now the exchange rate risk. Then you buy futures and you're fine. So we've not seen percentage times, uh, uh, in percentage times, a very high percentage live in Nigeria. If anything, we're still seeing uh, inflows into Nigeria. And that's great news at this time. Still on Prime Minister's visits to the uh, FMD. The exchange place today. What for you will then be the uh, immediate, medium term, and long term impacts? Let's start with the immediate. Um, this is the first time most Nigerians even stepped into the exchange place. I mean, they've seen uh, what FMDQ offers. Um, we expect that listings people will look at FMDQ as the place to list their securities. Um, it's been for some time, but I think this is a super validation of what we've been talking about. Um, a, 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 again, for us, we look at the medium term, uh, the work we do. Um, I guess people 
pay attention and what we've been preaching medium term, long term, is for one people to look at that debt capital market seriously. There's so many shifts, there's so many changes coming out, you know, past two, three, and those things will gain momentum over, over time. Uh, uh, banking credit is not very stable because the central bank, rightly so, will react to monetary policy challenges. Uh, so we, we, we've been encouraging people to have that switch from banking credit, uh, especially for the long term, for, for, for the for the long term borrowers into the debt capital market. Uh, again, FMDQ, this offers opportunity. I mean, you had what our chairman represented by the vice chairman said as the strategic role of FMDQ to be that cap catalyst for infrastructure capital. Uh, 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 that that is one area that we're looking at seriously. Uh, in terms of the VC, the, the investors uh, as well, um, that, that will look at some of the securities that will be listed on FMDQ. Long term, um, <clears throat> and we're very passionate about this, we, we would like to move the needle for the debt capital market in Nigeria to a significant percentage, and rather than it being a very low single uh, double digit to the GDP, in actual fact, we expect. Uh, some significant percentage over the GDP in terms of, you know, you know over 100 percent. That is the sort of long-term views we, we would expect, uh, and this sort of visit is going to ensure capital moves. It's going to move in both directions, but we expect Nigeria to gain more.